When we think about the biblical Christmas story, we often think about angels, shepherds, and wise men visiting baby Jesus. All of these are true and accurate and right. However, when I think about Christmas, I often also think about a passage in Galatians that really puts a different perspective on the Christmas story. Hello, my name is Danny Ray, and this is Cross Driven. Today, I'm going to look at and examine a passage from the book of Galatians that really puts the Christmas story in a different perspective, perhaps one you have not heard before. The passage is found in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. The text reads, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. There is a ton of rich theology in these two verses. However, verse 4 is a verse that directly relates to the Christmas story. So what is the Christmas story? The Christmas story is that God became a man. He took on flesh and blood to enter, to invade human history in order to redeem us. He was truly man and truly God. God dwelt among men. We see this in John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God became a man in order to redeem us from sin. One definition of redeem is to deliver from sin and its consequences by means of a sacrifice offered for the sinner. This is what Christ did on the cross. But I want to focus today on the first 13 words of verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son. See, Jesus did not come early and Jesus did not come late. Jesus came at the right time. He came right on time. But what does it mean when it says in this passage, the fullness of time? Now, there may be some areas that I'm not aware of. However, looking at the Bible and looking at history, I see three broad areas that indicate to me that the first century was the most ideal time for God to invade history in the form of a man in order to redeem us from our sin. It was the fullness of time for Jesus to come, and it was the fullness of time for the gospel message to be spread and embraced. First, it was a fullness of time spiritually. See, by the time we get to the first century, the Jews had abandoned their false idols that they had worshipped throughout the centuries. Uh, they also had a eager expectation for the Messiah that would come. The Jews had been conquered by Rome and they were under Roman oppression. And they eagerly anticipated and awaited the Jewish Messiah who they believed would come and liberate them from Roman oppression. Also, during the first century, Greek philosophy had left many people spiritually empty. So we can see that spiritually, the first century was a fullness of time for Jesus to come. Second, it was a fullness of time politically. Rome had conquered many areas and many countries, and their empire stretched all across the Mediterranean basin. Because Rome had conquered all these areas, Rome was able to institute a Roman peace that is called the Pax Romana. This peace all throughout the empire meant that people could travel from one end of the empire to the other end of the empire. Christians were going to use this opportunity to travel to spread the gospel, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And this was made effective because of the Roman Empire and its political system. Also, the Roman Empire had built an extensive network of roads. Their road system crossed the entire empire, and originally these roads were created, they were made, in order to be able to quickly transport the Roman army from one part of the empire to another part of the empire in case of a threat or a potential threat. Well, Christians are going to use these road networks in order to travel uh, across the empire in order to spread the gospel. Third, it was the fullness of time culturally. During the first century, Greek was the language that was spoken all throughout the empire. This allowed the gospel to be communicated to various people groups because they all understood a common language. Additionally, the Roman army recruited many of its soldiers from areas that they had already conquered. These soldiers are now going to be exposed to Roman culture and also to the gospel. Because we see, for example, in the book of Philippians, that within 30 years of Jesus' death and resurrection, we see that the gospel has penetrated not only the Roman Empire, not only the Roman army, but it has even begun to circulate among the imperial guard in Rome that guard the emperor. So as these soldiers are encountering Roman culture, as they are encountering the gospel, those who become Christians, those who become believers, when they leave the army and go back to their homelands, they are bringing back with them the gospel, and they are, of course, sharing and spreading the gospel back to those areas. 
This also shows that the first century was the ideal time for this to take place. So there you have it, three crucial areas that demonstrate that the first century was the ideal time for Jesus to appear, for Jesus to come, and also for the gospel to begin spreading. So why is this important? Well, the reason this is important is it really demonstrates that God is in control. God is sovereign. God orchestrates people, events, and situations in order to accomplish his will. That means that if we have put our faith in God, our faith is well-founded because God is going to accomplish his purpose. Now, since we're talking about God's complete control of events and complete control of history, I would like to examine one more passage. It's going to be a familiar passage that's read many times uh, during Christmas, but this is a passage that illustrates the minute detail that God is in control and how he orchestrates uh, events uh, to accomplish his will. And it's actually found in Luke chapter 2, a very familiar passage. So I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 4 through 6. The text reads, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered or taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. So what we see in this passage is a Roman emperor has issued a decree for everyone to go back to their home of lineage. Now, he doesn't do this because he's thinking in his mind, well, let me go ahead and do this. That way the Messiah can be born. He doesn't have that thought at all. He is doing this out of his own reasons for his own goals. But God is behind the scenes orchestrating events in order that his will will be accomplished. This reminds me of the story in the book of Genesis in which Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. And later his brothers come down to Egypt trying to buy grain. And when they come down, Joseph is his second in charge, second in command of Egypt. And Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, and he tells his brothers, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. So even though things take place that are beyond our control and we don't understand, we can be assured that God is in control. Friend, if you don't notice God who arranges history and events in order to accomplish his will, what better time than now for you to put your trust in him? Jesus Christ came to earth, died on the cross in our place, the reason he died on the cross in our place is because we've all rebelled against God. We've rebelled against our creator. The price, the cost of that rebellion is separation from God and it is death. Jesus came and he died on the cross in our place and he took our penalty and he suffered in place of us. And he offers forgiveness, eternal life, and adoption as sons to those who will res respond by repenting, turning away from our sin, turn away, from, turn away from our rebellion, and putting our trust and our faith in Christ. If you do this, the Bible tells that those who have responded to Christ, they will be rescued, they'll be delivered from sin, from both the effects of sin and the consequences of sin, and that they will have eternal life. If you have found value in this video, I'd like to ask you to share it with someone else, and also consider subscribing if you have not done so. Thanks for watching.